This is a good buy for every EV, yes, even a Tesla. So Revchar sent over this universal EV charger. I've been using it for a few weeks now, and it's been pretty nice. What I liked most was a very easy initial setup. After I mounted it to the wall, I literally just plugged it in and started using it. No other setup was required. Now, keep in mind, I do own a Tesla. Things might be a little bit different for your own car. All right, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself at all. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about the charger. First, I'm going to tell you about all of its cool features. Then we do an unboxing. And finally, I do a full install. And uh, guess what? Super easy. Keep in mind, I did the plug-in install. So again, I own a Tesla. Why would I want to buy this charger with this J1772 connector on there? Because that's not a Tesla connector. My Tesla came with this. This is called a mobile charger. Well, guess what I'm going to do now with this mobile charger? I'm going to make it mobile by putting it in my trunk, all right? This is going to be my emergency charger for the road. A lot of people are worried about being out on the road and running out of charge, all right? And, and you know, that's legitimate, and it's legitimate in a, in a gas car, too. You could be out there and you run out of gas. Well, what happens when you run out of gas? you got to try to find a gas station. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is you are always closer to an electric outlet than you are to gasoline. Think about it. Where don't we have electricity in this country, all right? If you have gasoline nearby, you have electricity nearby. And again, chances are you're much closer. Look at me. There's electricity right there. <laughs> Everybody's house has electricity. How many houses have a lot of gas for your car? So this, along with an extension cord, is going to be in my trunk from now on. This is my spare tank of gas. So with the J1772, this charger can be used for tons of different EVs, Tesla, non-Tesla. But you can't use this Tesla charger, or actually most of the Tesla chargers, on non-Teslas. Tesla does make a J1772 charger now, but it costs about $550, and it doesn't have all the features that this one has. So this will charge at up to 50 amps, 12 kilowatts of charging. If you're charging a Model 3 or a Model Y, that will give you 44 miles of charge per hour. Keep in mind, that's going to require a 60 to 70 amp circuit, which I don't even have here. But I'll get to more of these charging rates in a minute. Now, the Tesla charger that charges at those kind of rates will cost you about $750. Now, the mobile charger that I've been using for the last two or three years now will only charge at about 32 amps max, which is about seven and a half kilowatts. And it charges my Model 3 at about 30 miles per hour of charge. Keep in mind these charge rates that I'm throwing out there, this 30, uh, that depends on your model and which means your battery size. The other option is to do a hard wiring option, which basically would have these wires coming from here, coming right into the back of this unit here. Now, I went with the 1450 outlet because I'm using this outlet for other things too. Now, um, like I've got a portable heater in the garage and things like that. Uh, I've got a whole other video on how to install one of these yourself if you'd like. I'll put a link up somewhere and down below, definitely. The charging speed on this can be adjusted anywhere from 5 to 50 amps. This can be adjusted using the app, or there are three dip switches inside the, the charger itself that can be configured to uh, automatically charge at that rate anytime you plug it in. Some cars also allow the adjustment to be made in the car. I know in the Tesla screen, I can set the amperage to whatever, so it doesn't matter what the charger's putting out, uh, whatever I set it to in the Tesla, that's what it's going to be charging at. But every manufacturer in this regard is different. So the charger comes with these two RFID cards. You can add these RFID cards to the charger using the mobile app. The cards allow you to have multiple cars and customized features for each one. From the app, you can remotely control the charger, access real-time charging status and data, manage devices and RFID cards, and customize the charging mode for optimal charge times. Some areas allow discounts if you charge in the middle of the night or during the day or not during the day whatever in your area. My area doesn't have that, so uh, luckily I don't have to worry about that. But this will allow you to do that. Some cars allow you to do that. Uh, I know Tesla does now, but many of the manufacturers don't have that in the car. So that's what's a great feature with this and uh, using the app. Now, again, because I have the Tesla, I didn't even need to use the app. I didn't install it. But from what I read, 
the app works great and it's again it's a fantastic option if you don't have that inside your car i've also read that some of the in-car apps are really glitchy so again nice to have built into this one all right a couple downsides that i've found so far using this for a few weeks uh it's pretty cold out here now I'm in the Chicagoland area and it's been, uh, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 degrees in the garage. This cable, this cable is not super flexible, all right? It's not like difficult to bend or anything, but when you move it around, the colder it is, just the more non-flexible it is. It's also, it's a massive cable, but again, it can supply up to like 50 amps. So, you know, it kind of needs to be thick, but yeah, this the rubber here is just a little bit, inflexible uh, again hasn't caused me any real issues there's no issues with it it's just second because it's a j1772 and i own a tesla i've got to use this adapter now these adapters are kind of everywhere i think you can pick them up for about twenty dollars now i'll have some links below so i have to keep this one plugged in here because i don't want to keep plugging and unplugging it every time i want to charge the car uh so i'm going to need to buy another one because i like to keep one of these inside the car in case I need to charge somewhere or sometimes there's free charging like at the movie theater or something and it requires this adapter so um, I'm gonna have to buy another one of these and again I just leave this one on here oh also then it's got this uh, now how I keep my charger I just kind of hang it here like this okay but it has this it has this holder thing here holster I don't know what to call it and you know you can kind of plug it in and that's kind of cool it would be nice to be able to use that um but i also don't like the way it makes this stick out here so um i probably wouldn't use it anyway i just kind of like it to be right here kind of everything lays flat against the wall better but uh when you've got this adapter plugged in you can't use this so i don't know it's not really a big deal to me okay this cable is pretty long at 20 feet 25 feet i don't know i'll put the number up here now i've got it's pretty close to my garage door you know it's my garage door so this can reach my car if i park it pretty close to the garage door and i could slip this under the door and, and and charge it uh the charge port on my car is in the back of the car so it, you really need a long cable to make that run keep that in mind uh, when you're trying to decide where to mount your uh, mount your charger, any charger that you get, and the cable length. Now, I also keep my car in the garage all the time, so it really doesn't matter. So I just need, whatever, a few feet here to, to plug it in. So this unit has three different ways to charge. One is automatic, where you just take it, plug it into your car, automatically starts charging. That's what I did with my Tesla. It's fantastic. Second way, with the app. Plug it into your car, and however you have it set up in the app to charge, that's what it does. Third way, using these RFID cards. Plug it into your car, swipe your card, it starts charging again, however you have it set up with this particular card for whatever car you have. I also see they have 24 seven support and a three year warranty. All right, let's see what we got in the box. All right, installing instructions, which you don't need because you got me. All right, this is for the app nice all right product labels we've got install location cards Ooh, look at this oh man this looks cool looks bigger in real life but man this looks good obviously we got some protective coating on there which we're going to leave on until we get this in completely installed and Here's what was underneath. Look at a massive cable. All right, nice big plug. I think this is a, this is a 1450. Yeah, so this is the J1772. And it's got this nice protective coat on it. Look at that. Nice, clean, brand new. Like it. All right, so we've got our mounting plate. We've got some screws and other tools. What is that? Just a basic little screwdriver. Charge card. Why do we need a charge card? Okay, we'll find out. All right, can't wait. Let's get this installed. All right, so first thing we got to do is pick a spot on the wall for this. 
and it's going to be based on how the cord is going to be plugging into your outlet. Now, because I had the mobile connector, the way the mobile connector was, the neutral was better to be on top. So if you're considering this, uh, they tell you to, because the way this plug is, the neutral is going to be on the bottom if you want this cord straight, like this. Um, but in my case, that would put the charger way up here, which I'm not sure I would want anyway. So uh, this might work out better for me because I'm going to have to loop it around like this to plug it in this way, if you can see that. So uh, that's fine. So now these cables are huge. They're also a little bit, they're, they're actually, they're very stiff, not extremely stiff, but it's also a little chilly in the garage, so that's not helping. Okay, so let's line this up. I'm going to mark this with a pencil right about there. Then we're going to put our plate on, and I believe it goes... So once this plate is on the wall, um, the charger is just going to go like that, and it's just going to hang on it. We can line up the bottom with that pencil mark we made and it'll go like this. Now what I wish, I wish it had another hole right here because you have to line it up with a stud or you, you should try to line it up with it, it to at least have one screw in to have one screw in the stud so um, I wish it had another another hole right there and although they give you these anchors um, I've got pegboard here I'm not sure how well these anchors are going to be able to hold into the pegboard. Uh, if they don't seem to be holding in well on top with just the one screw and a stud, I may decide to drill another hole right here. Just install it that way so I've got just two of them in the stud then I don't have to worry about these at all. Now, you could use this template. You'd have to cut it here and hold it up. I'm just going to use the plate here itself. I'm going to do a little pre-drill. Now, because I have this pegboard in there, I can just line everything up with the holes, but you should probably put a level in there, just, or you can eyeball it. Just make sure you've got everything straight. Feels solid. There are a couple of these little baby screws put underneath here just to kind of just to kind of hold it in better all right let's plug her in oh look at that I like the looks of that it doesn't look like bright LEDs it almost looks like like it's printed on there all right, as much as I want to start playing around with this thing right now, we've got to install this to deal with this. After much consideration, consultation, consternation, decided to put it right about here. Now, honestly, I wanted it a little bit over, but I really want to put this in the stud, which is right over here. So where that mounts to right about here. Anyway, uh, I would try it there, but yeah, again, I'm just afraid that this, this isn't really going to hold it along with these, uh, these anchors because uh, there's just, it's just not that thick. Put it in the stud right here and get this going, but it's going to look a lot like this. Now, they give you this big punch card thing, which you can also use to line up the holes, but I'm just going to actually use this. All right, so could just leave this hanging here, or it's actually designed. I like this plug, by the way. It's kind of nice. Um, or it's actually designed to put this in here. I like it. Check it out. All right, so that's the install. Let's see how it charges. All right, let's check this out. Uh, I didn't expect this to start charging again. Uh, the car had been charging all night. Uh, it had about 20 hours, uh, plugged in 20 hours. It didn't take 20 hours to charge, but it added a, a total of about 19 kilowatt hours. Um, I came out here, opened the car up, and I was going to set the uh, the charge 
percentage higher so that it would start charging again and it automatically started doing that uh, you know with it being cold outside the car loses charge uh, just keeping the batteries warm so it will turn on and off as we go so as you can see uh, however um, what I set my car for again a Tesla I set it inside and I'll show you in a minute for 28 amps and here we are 28 amps and you see that it's charging um, it's plugged in this green light means it's charging uh, these lights here mean that I'm uh, it's Christmas time and uh, I, I do some crazy stuff with my car <laughs> check out those videos but anyway uh, back to this so let's watch what happens here okay now we're in the car you can see I have it set for 28 amps max of 48 now keep in mind my old mobile charger wouldn't go above maybe 32 amps uh, here though with this charger I should be able to go up to 48 uh, even 50 amps I'm trying to think though if my, my circuit, um, in other words the wiring the uh, the fuse you know in the fuse panel downstairs I think it's only a 50 amp circuit so um, I'm gonna crank this up though to 40 and see if it can do 40 I mean it should see what happens okay wow <laughs> in a few seconds it was already up to 40 amps that is uh, that is fast it like ramped up really quick while it's charging let's let's push this button here that just like the mobile charger when you push that button it did stop it from charging so that's nice however it also unlocks this little clip here we have this reset let's start a new charging session here's the only thing though like the mobile charger you used to be able to push this button and it would open up this door again on a Tesla now it doesn't do that but you can just do it this way and then plug it in and it's pretty instantly it, I heard it click and it should start ramping up you see you got these green bars going across that's pretty slick watch it ramp up here little by little oh okay I still have it set to 40 amps increased charging capacity now with this uh, again it will depend on your circuit so we should be good to 50 amps um, but I don't need to run 50 amps so I'm just gonna put it at 40 but now I have that kind of capacity and I've got a really cool display look at this thing <laughs> I am really happy with this I gotta say hey hey and it looks like the car is happy too 